nowadays anyone can get hacked. But what happens when those who protect us are the victims? For example, cybersecurity firms. Well, when that happens, there are always lessons to be learned. Today's story is about one of the most trusted names in cybersecurity, Cisco. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Breached. We are joined today by Joe Stalker, the founder and CEO of Patriot Consulting Technology. Joe, what happened? On May 24th, Cisco became aware of a potential compromise roughly three months, you know, a little bit less than three months after the investigation began, um, they determined that one of their employees' password was essentially obtained or guessed by an attacker. And Mm -hmm. what made this kind of interesting is that it was actually this employee's personal Google account where the password was obtained from. So here you have a Cisco employee, presumably using employee, you know, uh, business equipment, and they were somehow permitted or allowed to use their personal Google account on that business laptop, which is actually pretty common, believe it or not, uh, for businesses, but not something you necessarily would expect from, say, Cisco, which is the company that many businesses trust to run their firewall. And essentially, what that's what happened here is the Cisco password somehow got saved into this person's personal Google account. And the way that the report describes it is that the victim's web browser, presumably Google Chrome, is taking their Cisco password and backing it up to Google. So the attacker um, targets this individual uh, through a series of um, essentially prompts on their phone. Uh, You may have heard of multi-factor authentication. So this employee gets this push notification and they accidentally hit yes. Um, We sometimes call this uh, MFA fatigue, where a user just either makes a mistake or they get confused and they see all these prompts coming and they eventually just hit yes when they shouldn't. And, And that honestly is is not the type of configuration that I would have expected to see from a security organization um, because this type of uh, multi-factor authentication is is really one of the weakest types of multi-factor authentication. Uh, They then got on to what's called a virtual private network, a VPN. And once they're on VPN, then the rest of the story gets really interesting how far this attacker got. The threat actor is known as what's called an initial access broker. And this particular initial access broker, based on uh, what Cisco Talis believes, is tied to a group called Lapsus. And this particular Lapsus threat actor uh, is has some notoriety, uh, some infamy, Uh, for successfully getting into very large organizations such as Microsoft and Okta, uh, Nokia, and many other large organizations. So what we really take away here is that security organizations really need to embrace the same technologies that they're promoting and selling to their customers. The other takeaway is this, that when you're running products from other security companies like Cisco, um, you need to have a a threat model that assumes that these companies could be breached. Because Lapsus in particular, they're known for stealing source code. And in this particular incident, Um, There is a a lot of data that was removed uh, from Cisco and the danger that that poses to Cisco's customers is if that was source code, which is, again, the habit of uh, in the pattern, uh, the modus operandi, the MO of Lapsus is to steal source code from organizations and then essentially extort that organization that if you don't pay us a large fee, we're going to release the source code. And that would be very dangerous because 
hackers can look at source code to find vulnerabilities in products and then therefore uh, potentially hack Cisco's customers, leaving them potentially liable uh, to any potential damages that could have resulted in that due to uh, the fact that Cisco had not really set up, um, you know, great security here in this particular case. You know, I, th I think that uh, everyone should really adopt um, what's called an assume breach mindset, where you assume, uh, you know, that really any company um, can be hacked and could potentially already be hacked. Um, that mindset allows you to really form uh, kind of a hunting mindset uh, where you're searching for uh, threat actor activity um, and indicators of compromise so that you're really on the lookout. So you can't really prevent a breach like what Cisco experienced. The best thing that you can do is to detect it and to respond in the quickest possible manner to contain it, uh, to prevent it from, uh, you know, becoming uh, worse.